everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, to start off, I'm going to do a roll call vote. Uh, not vote, excuse me, attendance. I'll just go across my screen. Brianna Quinn? Here. Sharon Persons? You're muted, Sherry. <laughs> okay. Here, sorry. Thank you. Mary Carney? Here. Irene Costello? Here. And I, Diana West, am also here. And we have Tom Quinlan on the call as well as a guest. So bear with me. I'm doing double duty tonight because Courtney's not here. So I might need um, a couple minutes to catch up on the minutes. But do I have a motion to accept the minutes from the June 18th, 2024 meeting? Yes. And a second? Second. Is that Mary? All right, yes. I have to roll call vote again. Brianna? Yes. Sherry? I wasn't here, so I'm going to pass. All right, abstain. Mary? Uh, I don't remember if I was here, but I will say yes. You, you were. You <laughs> I were. think you were. <laughs> okay. uh, Irene? Yes. Everybody. And I, Diane West, vote yes. So motion carries. Thank you. All right, I was going to ask to move 101 E Street to right now, but since we still don't have Mr. Tuttle, um, I'm going to launch right into the preservation plan summary, CPA application. Um, so, Brianna, you're up. I have it on my screen. Do you want me to share my screen, Brianna, or do you want to share your screen? Um, if you want to share yours, that would be great. Second. And just an FYI to everyone. This is a rough draft. I sent it to Diana um, to go over earlier. She's done some edits, which I am very grateful for. Um, so this will hopefully go out to everyone after the meeting for all of you to look at and just kind of add remarks or add edits or whatever, whatever it is that you see fit to do to it is totally fine. Okay. Want me to scroll down? This is a pretty basic. First page. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Brown, do you want to explain the pricing and stuff? Yeah. So, um, the request is for the top dollar that Chris um, asks for in his proposal for a preservation plan summary. We figured that we, because of course we're, we don't have the budget for a full preservation plan, then we should go for top dollar for the preservation plan summary and try to gain as much out of this as possible. And also just to cover all of our bases. Um, and we decided, Diana and I had talked about saying the total project cost is gonna be 1500, but that we were gonna use part of our allocated budget for the year to work on some action items following the preservation plan summary, if it makes sense for us. Can I, I have a question. Is 1500 like uh, a, yeah, uh, you know, how does it fall within the amount that you usually see in CPA funding requests? Incredibly nominal. Yeah. So I mean, um, most CPA requests are tens of thousands of dollars. Right. And as would like a full, a full um, plan, you know, would be probably up that. Yeah, I think Chris yeah. had quoted it somewhere around like 30 to 40,000 starting for a preservation okay. plan. Right. So, I, you know, if if it makes that just if there are any out of pockets that you were foreseeing, you know, better to ask for more and maybe not take it out of our budget if if we can um, request it all. That's true. I mean, we could always try to to ask for somewhere around 2000 instead in case we have action items we want to work towards. It was just easier with a budget because he sent um, his document for a preservation plan summary, which I'll be including as additional materials. Yeah. And the quote was for 1500 for his um, like budget breakdown for the highest number on his budget breakdown for that. So unless we can come up with a budget breakdown for what the rest of the money would be used for, um, I don't know, I'll leave that to you, Diana. I thought you, I'm sorry, I thought there was money that we were going to take out of our nominal <laughs> historical commission budget 
and maybe we oh, you know, just yeah. ask for all of it. Yeah, it was it was just um, we had talked about explaining the budget for this, and since the budget for this is pretty straightforward, further on in the document, I had said um, after talking with Diana about it, like if there are other things because it asks what percentage of your annual budget is going towards this. And since none of it is going towards this so far, um, basically I said in a paragraph or a sentence here rather, um, that if there was something that we needed to do after this, that we would use part of our annual budget for it, just to kind of explain the budgeting and why we're not using our budget for this. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, we did get $900 this year for a budget, which is to be spent by June 30th. Um, I don't believe we've earmarked any of that specifically. Usually we use our budget as things come up, as we know. There's been a lot of incidental costs with the projects we have been working on. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we want to up this to 2000, I think that's fine. We just have to be ready to explain why. Um, and it could be that that extra money would be used towards incidentals we don't currently foresee. Um, I mean, as we saw with our other CPA projects, um, prices increased as we went along with those projects um, as we had old estimates. Um, and we thought we had enough contingency, but ultimately the project did cost a little bit more than we thought it was going to. Um, in this instance, I, I think Chris is pretty firm on what he's going to charge us. I think he'd be upfront if he wasn't, as he understands that we are applying for this now, but ultimately we will not be awarded the money until the end of October. So whatever price increase he would think of, I think it's already rolled into what he shared with us. Yeah, it was kind of a bracket of different, um, you guys will get all the materials, but you'll see in his price breakdown, I think he has maybe three different tiers of this and 1500 was the highest listing that he had on the documentation. So, um, you know, maybe I can reach back out to him and see if there would be anything additional. But I think unless we went for a full preservation plan, there's not much else that he could do was my understanding. I just wanted to point that out and make sure we can, you know, just add, you only get to ask for it once. <laughs> and I mean, we could go and ask for 2000 and they could ask for a breakdown and we could explain what we're thinking and they could say, well, actually, we'd be more comfortable doing the 1500. They're usually very open to working with you and amenable to making those changes as long as it happens far before annual meeting floor, excuse me, town meeting floor. So anyway, the rest of this um, document is pretty wordy and lengthy, but it's just a detailed um, description of what the preservation plan summary will entail. Um, you will all be sent this after the meeting if people don't want to take time to read it all right now. Um, but it just basically goes over what would happen with the preservation plan summary and the days that we would spend with Chris and what the meetings would look like. Um, and then at the end, there are a couple of sentences about how it will benefit the town. Um, these edits that you see were about primarily about um, what we had talked about in our last meeting a little bit, a little bit, but briefly, we had talked about whether or not to kind of include our rollover plan for this and like what our action items would be after this was completed. So going towards moving towards like a database an online database of um, historical resources and you know, Diana and I had talked about whether or not to include that, include that on this. And we said we should include it because I had written a paragraph um, or, you know, some stuff, bullet points about that as well. But I wasn't sure if we should keep it on here just because it's, you know, not quite what this budget is going towards. And we said we can kind of include it, but be a little more vague about our plans for that since it's not solidified as of yet. Yeah, I don't want to overpromise something. Yeah. Um, that we aren't sure if we'll be able to complete. So I think that we could we can just give a one line that that's a goal we are working towards um, and just leave it at that because maybe that won't be where this project takes us. Um, but it's just, while not giving too much away, it's a good idea for them to have an idea of what we're thinking of because we might be going to them in the future for more money for a project like that. 
we were a little bit hung up on this category question. So I wrote this one line um, as it fits multiple of these uh, categories because overall we are looking at all historic structures within Hadley. And the same for number two in terms of objects, while we will mainly be looking at properties, there are things, and I mentioned the um, Women's Christian Temperance Union Fountain as one of the objects we might consider looking into preserving as we'd already brought that up at past meetings. Yeah, the questions are definitely a, a little bit um, more confusing since this document was changed um, this past winter from the last time that one of these was submitted. And I thought that the last one was definitely more straightforward in terms of what we would be asking for for this. This is a little bit more confusing in terms of the question. So I was glad that you took the lead on that, Diana, because I was like, I have no, <laughs> no idea what I'm supposed to be writing here. Yeah, I think there is um, like a state division of CPA that provides guidance for each city and town who has it. So um, most likely they provided this guidance um, for our CPC. All right, and this is just all the information that's already in the application. Um, down here, we just have a summary of everything that Brianna put up, a, up above. And then um, this was the one thing we had a question about and I said that we should include it, um, just be vague about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I had a whole detailed paragraph about it, but then you know I had also written, should we include it? Because I wasn't sure. Um, so I agree with you, Diana, that like a one sentence thing about how or where this can take us potentially in the future is better instead of, the whole paragraph, I just wasn't sure. So mm -hmm. if everyone's in agreement to not overpromise, I think it's probably a good idea also. Because also um, we want to do this summary right now, but we don't know like timelines moving forward with this project. So by the time a database could be possible, none of us might even be on the commission anymore, just thinking of the amount of work that would take. Mm -hmm. Is, All is, right. there mention, is there mention here of the last preservation plan that was done? About what we, was it done? We had talked oh. about putting that in as additional materials um, because the last preservation plan that was done was for three buildings in town specifically and how to move forward with those buildings and not necessarily an overall preservation okay. plan. I'm not sure, Diana, um, is there or was there ever a full preservation plan done for the town? There is a master plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I am not familiar with the historic preservation plan that was done, I would say, within this century. Potentially something was done in the past. Um, if it did happen, I don't have it. Okay, there's something up in Google Docs. Yeah, so that's the one Brianna's talking about that's just for North Hadley those, Hall, right. the Town Hall, and Russell right. School. Correct, okay. <clears throat> All right. All right, any more questions about this? Okay, it is due August 1st. Uh, I'm away next week, so we are hoping to wrap it up by the end of this week so I can help Brianna submit everything in the right formats. Yeah, so if you guys, if Diana sends it out at the end of the meeting, if all of you would just, you know, skim it, take a look, see if there's any further edits that you think are necessary um, or anything else you want to include, I would really appreciate that. Okay, sure. All right, thanks, everybody. So it looks like we do have our guests now. Welcome, everyone. Um, just for a point of order, I do need to know people's full names so I can add it to our meeting minutes as this is to comply with open meeting law. All right, so I see Tom Quinlan's on the call and I also see that Ella and Larry are here. You could just yeah, quickly uh, introduce yourselves. Uh, Larry Tuttle. And I'm involved with the Thomas project. Quinlan. 
at uh, 101 East Street. Great, thank you. Tom, I heard you starting to talk. I'm sorry, you broke up, I apologize. I just was um, asking you to introduce yourself. Oh, Thomas Quinlan, the building commissioner, uh, 141 Bay Road. Excellent, and Ella. All right, maybe we'll catch them later. She's on mute. Yeah, I can ask her to unmute, but that's all I can do. All right. Well, at this time, I'm going to ask for the commission to make a motion to move up the agenda item to discuss 101 East Street. Do I have a motion? Yes. That was Irene, right? Yes. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Second. All right, seconded by Mary. Roll call vote. I'm just going to go across my screen. Brianna? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Mary? Yes. Irene? Yeah. And I die in West vote. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. All right. Welcome to our guests. Thank you so much for being here. I would just like to provide a little bit of background on this project as we know it on the Historical Commission. So we were originally approached in June 2023 by a representative of Drs. Cyrus Safizeda and Noel Nubani requesting information about the 1840 house at 101 East Street. At that time, we requested that they work with us to find a buyer of the structures for a nominal fee to move them. From July to November of 2023, we were in regular contact with both Dr. Safazeda and Dr. Nubani about this plan, and they were amenable to it. Dr. Safazeda, Cyrus, regularly attended our meetings and kept us up to date. He informed us that construction was two to three years away, and his current lease was not up until 2029. We proposed a marketing plan to advertise that the structures would be for sale. Cyrus assured us that at this project was years out, there was no urgency. We agreed that we would spend a year on this project and reassess should there be no updates at the end of the year. That decision was made in conjunction with Cyrus in October, 2023 at our meeting. Cyrus was also amenable to the idea of adding on to the existing structure, but with the current zoning laws, that is not possible. I reached out to Andrew Bombardier of the Zoning Board of Appeals to ask for more information, and he was amenable to the owners applying for a finding with the ZBA to determine if that could be possible. This information was shared with Cyrus. In January 2024, Cyrus res stopped responding to any of our emails, and we emailed him prior to each of our meetings asking for an update and did not receive one. Uh, last week, Tom Quinlan, the building commissioner, reached out to us to ask for our blessing to, for a demolition permit for 101 East Street. This was obviously very surprising as our last conversation with Cyrus back in the fall, he was very amenable to working with us to relocate the 1840 house located on the property. He also shared, uh, excuse me, Tom Quinlan also shared the variance filed by the Zoning Board of Appeals with the town clerk in May 2024. And we do understand that Cyrus reached out to three people about potentially moving the structures. So Larry Tuttle is here. He is the architect hired by the owners. And so uh, I invite Mr. Tuttle to share any updates as appropriate. Thank you. Uh, we did look at the potential of utilizing the building uh, or parts of the building because <clears throat> Presently, the bulk of the structure is in the right-of-way for the state's widening of Russell. So it could not remain in place. Uh, we did approach planning board uh, with a request to get some credits for trying to retain the building, which they could not give us that authorization because it is an encroachment into a state roadway. So we had to investigate moving the building if having any chance of utilization, either outright sale to someone for another parcel or movement on the, the present parcel. The assessment that we had with consultants and we had two or three people look at it, they were very hesitant about moving the building and having it remain intact. It has been poorly maintained for 
many, many years. And as such, they were certainly not going to become liable for its holding together in any kind of movement, even a small distance. So we started investigating if we were to salvage a certain, uh, certain parts of the building, we would still need a finding from, we found out from planning that the ZBA would have to give us that ruling to be closer to Russell Street than the 50 foot setback that's required by zoning. Looking at that, we determined that the resultant fragments of building that would remain would be basically obliterated. And some of the original detail has been obscured by the prior owner's effort to vinyl side the building. The vinyl siding, unfortunately, was not installed with the intent of any kind of preservation because there is no airspace behind the vinyl. And so some of the siding is actually accelerated in its deterioration. So it it becomes very problematic to place a practical use on the building. And I think that Tom could second that if you make a major change to an existing structure, change of use, uh, you have to bring the building up to present code. In doing so, Part of what would happen with the building in question is that the room sizes are too small for functional usage by the dentist. And as such, they're already undersized for framing. So we would have to basically take the building apart to build the building stronger. Secondly, the new energy codes, which would be imposed upon the project, would require a layer of exterior continuous insulation on the outside of the building, which further obscures any of the architectural detail that you perceive on this older structure. So ultimately, we had no true recourse because there was no individual stepping forward after the doctor's attempts to acquire the, the structure and move it to any other property. So that's why we approached zoning on the uh, in May to find, get a ruling and we're preparing documents for planning board to do a site plan review. That's where we are right now. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, just for clarification, at any time will federal funds be used in this project? No. Okay. Does anybody have any questions from the commission right now? Well, what is the time frame for the um, build out now, Larry? Well, presently, <laughs> with the widening of the roadway and the physical violation of the structure in that right of way, the current owner is liable for any findings of injury or damage because the building shouldn't be where it is. So we're trying to expedite, and that's why we had approached Tom to possibly expedite some of the bureaucratic red tape to remove the liability from the current owner. Uh, the current owner had not received compensation from the state for land taking. The prior owner had received that. So <clears throat> the current owner is really saddled with a removal cost to reduce that exposure. So he's hopeful that during the month of August, that that building could come down so that his liability exposure is eliminated. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions from the commission? Uh, Mr. Quinlan, did you have anything you wanted to add? Nope, I think Larry explained it all. All right, thank, thank you. you.
All right. I mean, so I, I, oh. I would add that the doctor did initially hope that there was possibilities to that were out there in the community and they did not come to the fore. And so it was not a immediately hire us and take down the building. That was not the intent or approach. And so uh, mm -hmm. he feels badly about that. But at the same time, we could not find an economic solution to trying to reutilize the building. Uh, from our perspective, and my fellow commission members can feel free to interrupt me and provide a different perspective. Um, you know, our, our, it seemed as though Cyrus stopped all communication with us in January, and it sounds, from what I'm understanding of this timeline, he moved forward with the project you just described. So we are just incredibly disappointed as we were ready to help him try to find a buyer for this. Uh, I understand that the timeline was accelerated, but we just wished that that had been shared with us as um, we're about now almost six months from that point of last contact, uh, six months that we could have been helping out with this project, working on this project. And it's, again, just very disappointing because we had a very amenable relationship in the beginning and um, Cyrus seemed very dedicated to trying to save those historic buildings. And I hear what you're saying, they are not in good shape, um, but I, I personally don't think enough was done to try to find somebody to buy it, even if it wasn't moved in one piece. Um, so that that's where we stand right now is that overall disappointment that we couldn't come <laughs> to a satisfactory conclusion for this project. Uh, that being said, Hadley unfortunately does not have a demolition delay bylaw and there are no historic preservations on the house. So we do not have any legal foundation to stop this demolition from taking place. Um, however, I personally don't support that happening. Um, and we do have a request that since the building will come down is that it is fully documented through images. That would include taking pictures of uh, the exterior from all angles, including all interior uh, rooms from all angles as well. I understand that extensive renovations have happened to the property. Obviously, this house is almost 200 years old. That's not surprising. Uh, but just so that we have a record, since it does li uh, is listed on a national historic district. Is that amenable to you, Mr. Tuttle? Uh, I had actually been approached, uh, I'm going to say six to eight years ago, with another client that was interested in the uh, same property and the requirement for uh, photographically documenting the building was then the request of the historical commission uh, as it stood back then. So I had presented that as a probability to the doctor. And he also would express, I believe, speaking for him, when I was first contacted about the project, uh, he was still talking about a time frame similar to what you've described. His practice has uh, expanded to the point that he's outgrown the space that he presently is in. And so he's now in a different situation than when he first sat with the historical commission, needing to move forward with a plan so that he can continue to service the uh, Pioneer Valley the way that he intends to with his dentistry. So, I mean, it's not uh, unfortunately frozen in time. It was not his original intent, nor was it really our intent to have to work later hours on trying to move a design forward. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we had a very comfortable pace of going through the process. It gave him ample time to contact a number of local individuals familiar with the building trades and and trying to relocate the prop the structure 
to a different mm -hmm. property. And, and it proved to be nothing that he could pursue, certainly independently. And so this is where we are. Thank you. And our goal was never to hold Cyrus back from uh, continuing to serve the community in the capacity that he does. Uh, it just, from our perspective, there's that timeline issue of that we were never informed that the timeline had to be accelerated. Because I think this would be a very different conversation right now if we had just been included in that process all along. Since we had already put in considerable legwork with him to move forward with the plan we had. So that is our current perspective mm -hmm. on the project. So are you going to make the image request of Cyrus or would you like me to send that in an email? Uh, you could send that as a request that, you know, certainly he's aware of that possibility mm -hmm. and we would try to accommodate that uh, there was a period of time where there were some tenants in the building that would have prevented, you know, a good access to it. Um, <clears throat> but we will, we can try to do that as quickly as possible to, okay. uh, to give you that record. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Quinlan, do you need, do you need anything more from us? Nope. Like I said, I just wanted you to be aware and make sure you're okay with issuing that permit when it did come in. All right, thank you. Uh, for a matter of record, I would like to uh, take a poll of the Historical Commission to see where they stand on this issue. Um, I guess I should technically make a motion, which would be, the motion on the floor is, we approve the demolition of the structures at 101B Street. Uh, seconding this motion does not mean you agree with it, just for clarification on how Robert's Rules of Orders work. So do I have a second to my motion? Second. Second. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, and now roll call vote. Brianna Quinn. Um, I approve. Okay, thank you. Mary Carney. Um, I don't support demolition just in the current status. I think we had a, a good plan and it would have been nice to, to follow that. But of course, it's his property. Mm -hmm. He's going to do what he's going to do. And I understand that. Uh, just for a point of order, this is not a binding vote. This is just sharing our opinions on this. Sherry? I would agree with Mary. I had hoped that we could work with Cyrus more than we were able to because of the ending of the communication. Irene? Um, I do approve of it, and um, but also I wish that it had, you know, there was time to <clears throat> find another solution, but I do Thank approve. Thank you. All right. Uh, and I, Diana West, vote no. So technically the motion does not carry as it was three no's to two yeses. Um, but like I said, that is just for record keeping. Um, we have no legal standing to stop this from happening. Uh, any other questions, final thoughts on this agenda item? All right, well, thank you, Mr. Shuttle. Thank you, Mr. Quinlan, for coming to the meeting, providing us with more information. We do really appreciate that. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, back to the agenda. Uh, we're going back up to the use of the West Street Common. So at our last meeting, we discussed overhauling the current application for um, using the Common, and we concluded we needed to do more research on that topic. Uh, just as a reminder as well, the select board asked that we uh, take this project on. So I had reached out to Jennifer at Town Hall to learn more about how the common was used prior to COVID, and I did not get a response. So um, that's the only update I have. And then I believe Mary was looking on researching pricing for using commons in other towns. Uh, yes, I've not had a chance to pull that together into a nice little report for everyone, which I fully intend to do. Oh, probably by the next meeting, um, but I wish I'd had that this week. It just didn't come together. Okay, no worries. 
Um, from what I understood, this was not an urgent request, um, but if it should become one, I'm sure they will let us know. Other comments on using the common? All right. So next up, old business, uh, CPA projects. So you might have seen that three of the four signs are installed. Thank you so much yeah. to Dan Ragish. It's like the greatest accomplishment of my life. Uh, and so we're still waiting on the Hawk and Elm one. Um, we were waiting to hear back from some dig safe people. So that's why Dan could not accomplish this um, last week when he was originally working on it. But um, he is planning to move forward with that. Uh, when they're all installed, I would like to do a ribbon cutting press conference and invite the select board and other um, town boards that were involved with getting this done. Um, I was looking at either the last week of August or the first week of September. I, it's crazy time for me, and I'm sure Sherry too with the three county fair, but that's when I'm going to be in town. So um, are other people available perhaps August 26th or 27th? or the first week in September, I could do probably September 4th or 5th. I could do okay. earlier, not later. Okay. Either of those work for us, I think, as we'll be back for school. So we should, I should be here. Dan, I'm sorry, I had to go let a cat out. What, what <laughs> uh, date and time did you say? Can you get away from the fair on either August 26th or 27th or September 4 or 5? Um, September 4 or 5 is okay. All right. That didn't work for me. The 27th of August is okay as well. Oh, okay, great. I'm sorry. That's okay. All right, shall we just say August 27th then? Mm -hmm. All right, let's lock that in. Okay, so also Courtney is putting together uh, mini gardens to go under the signs. She is thinking of echinacea and hummingbird mint, uh, which is purple and yellow to play off the colors of the signs. These are full sun plants. She thinks that all the signs are mostly full sun, but she's going to double check. Uh, Courtney is happy to do installation and maintenance, but would love to have some help with both. If, me, um, me, me, me. Okay, please. Right. <laughs> I would me also too. love to, I would love to input on that as well, because I would, um, I would really push to have all the plants be native plants and no no um, ornamentals. Okay. Just right, for I'll pollinator's sake. Put you all I'm in not touch. Sure if echinacea, if echinacea, echinacia is, is a native plant, so that one I approve. Okay, <laughs> the good. other one I'm not sure on. I'll have to check. Yeah. Righty. Uh, any other questions about the signs? Very exciting. Not a question. Comment. And so exciting. Yeah, it's I awesome. pulled over to go read the one on the common after Yay. getting dumped the other day. Yeah. <laughs> Very I Hadley experience. Very well. I know done. we've been meaning to take a field trip to the North Hadley one because it's right down the street. I haven't so. seen that one yet. Very well. Irene, done. were you trying to say something? No, I'm disagreeing. It's very well done. Great. Wonderful. And I have no artistic input on the plants, but I'm happy to help dig holes and stuff. <laughs> Physical labor is something I can help with. Same here. Oh, wow. Gangs all awesome. here. I love getting my hands dirty. Diana <laughs> knows that. All right. Walking tour. Courtney has started to circulate the proof. I think Brianna had it last and she was going to pass it to yes. Mary. Um, how is it looking? It's looking good. Um, Courtney did a couple of edits already um, and I've been slowly working my way through um, and editing as I go. I was emailing Courtney about it last week, frantically worried that I was holding up everyone before the meeting because um, my husband was out of town and I was trying to get it done with zero time. And she was like, no, no worries. We haven't even had approval from Holly Hobby yet. So it's no huge rush to get the 
um, walking tour edited, but I am hopeful that I will have it done hopefully by like the end of this week. So Mary, I'm happy to pass it on to you as soon as I'm done. Okay, great. Just let me know if you want me to pick it up somewhere or something. Okay, great. I can also just drop it off wherever, but it's looking really good. And I was very happy to read it just to have a hard copy. Also, sorry, screaming children in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy to have a hard copy um, to read and just kind of see. And it's been very interesting and informative. So I feel like I'm learning a lot, which is awesome. All right. Um, Courtney did reach out to, um, gosh, I'm blanking on her name. The woman who's a professor at UMass, can we quote her book? Marla. Yes, Marla Miller. Thank you. Wow, total <laughs> blank mind there for a second. Um, just to confirm with her that she was okay with using quotes from her book, and she was. She said she was absolutely flattered. So <laughs> we're all set there. So just Holly Hobby. <sighs> and She's she made a contact one. with the publisher too. So that's great. Yeah. So we are getting somewhere finally. <laughs> All right, any updates on the driving tour? Yes, so Alex and I have been back and forth um, many times about the driving tour now. Um, we're basically waiting on me because I have had a very busy few months with being husband out of town, and et cetera, full-time childcare. So I have not had a chance to set up a time to work with him, but we have spoken at length via email and over the phone about um, what's going to happen. So basically we're still at this point where I'm planning on going in and working on a demo with him and then sending it to everyone for approval prior to continuing with recording the whole thing, still working on finding a male voice um, for the voiceover. Um, I mean, it's a fairly limited part. So I think mm -hmm. it, should be possible even if I have to just like pull some favors <laughs> from okay. people that I know so you know it's not like you know hours in the studio I think they could someone could probably do it in an hour or two right because it's only it's only those like two maybe two paragraphs that need to be read in a male voice yes it is pretty limited okay yeah um, so I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure I can just like pull a string or two and hopefully <laughs> one of get our, someone super talented <laughs> to do it for us. For one me. of our Hadley fellows, uh, the voice of the Celtics or something like that. He might what? be, he might be good. Giles, is it Giles? Oh, Tom Giles, Tommy Giles. Yeah, doesn't he, he do he something? He goes by Tom Giles now, probably. <laughs> Mr. Tom Giles, yeah. I think he's some yeah, he something or other. Was on some kind of, news network in the boston area yep, he still is um you can see him regularly on tv yeah i mean it's it's worth an ask you'd be you know yeah. kind of famous <laughs> yeah that's a great idea i mean it's so small the only problem that i have run into as well as union requirements so it depends on what mm -hmm. his union situation is because they're very strict about those things okay got it I was also thinking that we could um, reach out to like teachers at Hopkins to see if they have anybody like involved in drama club who um, would be interested in doing that small part for us. Obviously wouldn't be a big name, but um, I think would be a good connection to have. And I think whoever offers to do it, if we get somebody, I think they'd be excited about the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, as long as someone can commit to a studio session and, you know, sort of knows what they're doing enough to sound good on a recording, you know, otherwise you can edit whatever, pretty much. It's fairly straightforward. Like voiceover editing is not complicated, um, you know, unless you're doing some huge movie or something, which we're not. So um, basically it's taking out breaths and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think it should be pretty straightforward when we find somebody so hopefully now that I like my situation has changed literally this week um my husband finished the show he was working on so he is back mm -hmm. and so now I can contact Alex and we can move forward with setting up a time he has fairly regular availability so as soon as I can jump in there um we should hopefully be able to move forward and I'm hoping to be able to get a little bit of this done at least the demo but hopefully more because he said that his summer months are typically the easiest time for him to do things all right thank you 
I have a question about the driving tour. How will this get distributed or published? So we had talked about posting it on SoundCloud. They allow you to post things for free up to, I think, like five hours of content or something. And we concluded that we didn't have that much content. Um, and then we would probably post it to our page on the town website, um, include it where the QR codes go um, off of the signs uh, and just try to share it out. I think um, we might be able to get in touch with some local chambers of commerce to try to share it for us. Um, I think we have not thought through a full marketing plan. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think I mentioned once before the app called Autio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you want me, I'll look into that. Okay, great. Yeah, that seemed like a good idea, I, wasn't I, it? Like, I did look into it once before and I heard back from them and they wanted more information and it was, uh, you know, we we weren't there yet. So um, we're getting closer and I would be happy to um, uh, yeah, uh, look into that more. Wonderful. Thank you. If I remember correctly, that was based on your location. Like if you have the Autio app, then they find recordings based on where you are. Exactly. So okay. if you're driving through Deerfield, you're going to hear about the battle, you know, the burning of Deerfield and um, the battle of Bloody Brook and the whole story behind that. And then when you come through Hadley, there'll be our stories that aren't there now. So yes, it would be good to know what their pricing structure is. We did ask for $500 from CPA as part of our overall application originally. Um, so that money is earmarked for the driving tour for whatever we need to use it for. I'll definitely look into that. But I, my understanding is that it's a subscription based. And so the, the listener pays a subscription for it. Okay. It may not cost anything yeah we'd be giving them free content to sell to other people mm -hmm. so hopefully they wouldn't charge us but you never know everyone's about making a dollar so mm -hmm. <laughs> two dollars if you can. gotta be ready <laughs> <laughs> all right any other questions about the driving tour all right so the house plaques courtney shared with me that she reached out to alan weinberg at the historical society and he said that, yes, originally the plaques were done by the Historical Society, and they still have a bunch of them hmm. um, that are blank. I guess that means they're just like the a white board. background, and then you <laughs> paint the number on. I have no idea what that means. Um, Irene, did you have any updates you wanted to share about the plaques? Well, I, I was taking the approach of just kind of looking at it from as a sort of traverse to financial plan. Um, you know what 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 it cost to if we wanted to create new plaques, mm -hmm. um, and or offer new plaques, and what style or material would they be? They can cost anywhere from uh, throw out a number, you know, sixty five dollars to one hundred and fifty, and you know. Um, would you want people to be able to each of the homeowners to pick out their own? Not sure. You probably want to have a consistent look and feel. Mm -hmm. So I think before going through all that, we should probably um, have a conversation of what's available and how much it costs and make some decisions or at least decide how to proceed with coming up with, you know, a, um, a potential cost for putting the plaques and then who obviously I think the homeowners would pay for it. We'd have to discuss that. And, um, or perhaps they didn't at the 200 bicentennial and they were free. I'm not sure. Did, did he say that? No, all I got was, yes, they did it. Yes. We still have some. Okay. Um, and you know, they, a lot of the houses who are, that are currently historic deemed historic, already have house plaques so the homeowners would you know need to want to upgrade them so mm -hmm. i'm thinking like this is going to be a nicer plaque than what's on the homes right now i'm wondering about making a mock-up of what a nicer plaque would look like like maybe mm -hmm. a brass plaque or i don't know what you know people would look like maybe we can google some um 
plaques that are consistent, like in Lexington, perhaps, or one of the other towns that has a lot of historic homes and see what they've done. And then maybe we can make a mock-up or several mock-ups of um, what a nicer plaque would look like and then figure out what the fabrication cost would be and if we wanted to add any cost on top of that for the homeowners to make money back for ourselves or if we'd be okay selling them to homeowners at cost. Correct. Yeah, I think the first step is picking out a design because then that will dictate how much it costs. Right. Um, and the design, you know, if the bronze plaques are are nice, but are they Hadley? You know, this mm -hmm. is the set six, uh, 17th century. Um, and so what, what would the materials have been there if you want to make it a little more historically accurate? The white signs that are out there now are somewhat colonial and you you know you see them around a lot but you see the brass um, I mean the bronze plaques in sort of different settings and in the slide that I showed with the various examples from different towns you know there were there were a couple of um, examples of the material and the design so I, mean, I really I I like the wooden ones that are up now I just wish they were all consistent because they're all so different so if we can come up with yeah. one that yep. looks like the ones that are there now. I mean, those are, it, I agree with you, Irene, that they do fit um, kind of the landscape here mm -hmm. better, like a more traditional sign. But if we could just come up with something and, and, you know, and then the other consideration is what would be on the plaque? Do we want the house? Do we want some history of the house? Do we want to have tiers that people could purchase? Like you could pay an extra $50 or $100 to get a, like a little notebook or history of your house along with the plaque. We kind of would have to figure out our ideas past that on how we wanted to actually sell these and if we wanted to make it a fundraiser or not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think picking a, a design and figuring out what would be on the plaques is the good place to start. I agree. And the, the ones that are out there now, a lot of, most of them <clears throat> are, you know, it's just a date on a wooden board that's white and black. So it's, it's pretty basic. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can do a better job, not a better job, but just, um, spiff it up a little bit um, yeah and some of them are like plain wood some of them have different color numbers some are white some are whatever like if you mm -hmm. can have a consistent yeah one all the way through um but I do like the ones that say like oh this house in Hadley or this was you know the whatever house like I think that those are mm -hmm. really interesting when you're driving by um so I don't and you know I'm sure it's not possible to have kind of a byline on every single plaque because we probably don't know things about every single house in town or do we I was gonna bring that up in that like you've seen them other places where it says like the the Benjamin Smith house right yeah and you're like okay who's that <laughs> but also like yeah. when you look in Macris for example like 101, 101 East Street that we were just talking about it's listed as the Elijah Hayward house mm. because he was supposedly the one who built it but like who is he Mm -hmm. is that does that really make sense to put his name on the house or is there somebody else who lived there that makes more sense or is that even a history we need to highlight um maybe there's a couple instances where like yeah so and so lived here they did xyz for the town and they were important whereas other cases like i mean people were building houses <laughs> that's what people do all right, all right. No, you're absolutely right. And there were, um, Macris doesn't have specific guidelines. I've asked them to, um, uh, for more information and I signed up for some new you know, uh, list, but I haven't gotten a reply yet. Um, but it's very open-ended. It's, and it's part of the criteria. It's you know, when the house was built, if it was a sort of a prominent person or there was something about the house that made it, historically significant and it's very open-ended um or very very you know loose um so i think then the the mock-up might be a little bit challenging to figure out what it would look like then because some of the house then might only have a date and other houses might have a little tagline um so then we'd have to figure out how to make that look consistent with the size discrepancies right yes I I think it could come down to we leave it up to the homeowner. Maybe they want Elijah Hayward's name on their yeah. house. 
Yeah. Could be an um, ancestor of theirs. Yeah. So there could be two possibilities that we yeah, could offer two, would have to be with two, the, for the byline and, and then yeah. and the date and the other with just the date. So that's probably going to take um, more research on our part on the potential properties. And I think we also should um, put a, a timeline or a, a, you know, what's, what will deem something historic? Is it a hundred years that would bring us up to 1924? Yeah, I was going to say, it's like we should decide on whatever we decide on what would be good for the demo delay bylaw in terms of age, then we can go with that same idea for these plaques in terms of what is historic and what isn't. Irene, were you thinking a hundred years would make sense? Yes. Yeah. Anybody could challenge me and I could back down, but yes, that was my, <laughs> that was my sort years. of off the top of my head. hundred years sounds like a nice round number. I think 100 years is a good place to start. Uh, if we look at the National Historic Districts, in those listings, they state the years of significance. And so in some cases, that is more recent than 100 years ago. So yeah, perhaps like that is sort of a... Um, a caveat that we have that, oh, if your house is in one of these districts, then it's extended to whatever year. I think like the Hadley Center one's like 1946 or something. Um, so we could think about it in that way too. Yeah, I know there are maybe two houses on Route 9 that are 30s houses as well that are, yeah, would be considered, I mean, I would consider them <laughs> important, historically important. And I also wonder like I mean we could say the hundred years thing but I mean say somebody comes to us and is like I really want a plaque and my house is 1930 I don't think I'm going to turn them away mm -hmm. right yeah I mean if somebody came to me and was like my house is 1980 I'd be like mm, not <laughs> yet I'm old enough yet <laughs> calm down with your vinyl siding let it mature a little and come yeah back. <laughs> um like I also um, think that you know, some of those houses, like the 30s houses, I think they're really beautiful. And a lot of them are in really prominent places, the 30s and 40s houses. So if they had plaques, I don't know, it, it lends itself to promoting historical mm -hmm. preservation in the town, regardless. I would agree. Well, that's a good point. You know, we can, it can be whatever, what it, you know, whatever we decide, whatever makes sense. Um, but there needs to be, then we have to decide are we going to, and you you alluded to this in the um, uh, application, creating a database of these resources? And is it, you know, are we going to provide a list of the houses that qualify for these plaques? Because they're in macros. Um, yeah. And, um, or at least the properties are in macros. Yeah, I would start by pointing people to macros. Um, I would warn people though that the house numbers that are in macros are out of date um because they were put in before we changed the jumping route nine for example um for example well, when i was trying to look up 101 east street it was listed as something totally different and that would explain why why run around uh driving through the some of the neighborhoods on east and middle street that didn't see houses that looked like they were at all historical based on the address so okay yeah, yeah. Um, so when they i think this dates back to when they decided to start using 911 mm -hmm. they changed the house number so any street that was bisected by route 9 restarts at 100 on the south end so that's why the town hall is 100 middle street east Hampton savings banks 100 east Hampton savings bank that um former tavern on the corner of West and Route 9, I'm guessing, is 100 West. They did some other rejiggering, too, because we went from 103 yeah. to 107, and we yeah. and they wrote isn't crossed. Like, they just sort of, I think, yeah. it's the numbers, you know, they, the built houses put numbers on them. Now they have grids. and They did, probably 20 years ago, they yeah. did it by building lot. Yeah. So, so your number might have changed if there was a building lot between you and your neighbor, you know, they may have been 103 and you were 105, but if there was a building lot, then you became 107. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. We didn't like it, but how do you know, how do you know what the <laughs> date is of the 
building. What do you mean? Uh, if 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 the um, if the database is changed, then and there were and it goes by lots. How do you know looking at the the lots? How will the houses on that? Um, I mean, I think it just has to do by site. I mean, there's a photo with every macros listing. So just trying to match that photo with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, I mean, you just have to like sit down and map it out yourself. So like, what's the library? It's 50 Middle Street, right? So then technically the town hall was 52 Middle Street maybe. And so just have to like think backwards like that because the also, North End didn't change. In the walking that much. tour. I did read that several of the lots are off because the houses burned down or things like that. So then they have random numbers because of that too. So that was a helpful learning <laughs> thing from the walking tour. Um, also, I was going to say two things about this. A, it points that we do need a different online database to make sure that this is all up to speed. And B, that in Chris's preservation plan summary, he's going to go over in our driving tour with him um, all the houses of historical significance. So that I think is a would would be and will be a very good jumping off point um, where we can just thoroughly go through with him and say like, hey, this is our plan also for these plaques. Can you just go through as we do this and say like, here are the first 50 that I would suggest like offering plaques to. So that would be like a really easy catalog that he's going to make mm -hmm. for us that we can we can work with for this. If we don't get it there's done. Another, but... There's a good idea for adding, asking for more <laughs> funds for the <laughs> application because it's going, you know, that's going to take some development on somebody's part, probably mm -hmm. ours, to make it easy for the homeowner and have them give them some place to go. You don't want to be like, oh, yeah, I want a plaque. And then you find out that, you know, your house isn't qualified and you have to, you've sent them to Macros to figure it out. They're not going to do that. It would be some towns have a list um, of addresses that have been screened and vetted that are um, qualifying for the plaque. And that would probably be a good idea. Yeah, so it it sounds like these projects um, feed into each other then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. Okay. All right, so-, so Brianna, could you add that into the, um, the applications, a, a mention of that? sorry um yes i i so i believe in the preservation plan summary as it stands that he will go through and catalog all of the historical resources i'm pretty sure that's somebody that's supposed to be um part of the preservation plan summaries so i'm pretty sure that's included but i agree with you irene that having a homeowner go into yeah. macros by themselves is going to be too much of an issue so um sure. <laughs> maybe that's sorry maybe that's something that we can offer as part of the plaque is that we would yeah. do the research about the house <laughs> or or start by at least qualifying the the address is a house that um yeah. is um qualifies for plaque yeah and yeah. we can we can help society has a lot of this stuff i mean we may have to dig through it on our own but it's all there what is all the old deeds and you know records for each house going back way back on macros or i mean they have other? they have done research on a lot of the houses and have it i don't know what organization it's in i haven't gone through their stuff but i know they have have done this like back in um miss russell's day she did histories of a lot of the different houses went through all the deeds and and all that stuff because she, she wrote one for us so. yeah i think a lot of what is in macros is based on her research yes. yeah i think so um the registry of deeds could also be helpful to us they should have records all those records unless they were lost in a fire as you always hear that happening or a flood oh, yes <laughs> that darn river <laughs> it's always moving Okay, so action plan for next time. Um, Irene, why don't you come back with um, like two or three design options? So we've narrowed it down that far at least. And then we can make a choice and then um, 
it kind of sounds like we need to wait until the preservation plan summary is done and then we can determine how to move forward or at least once we get the designs then I think we can determine pricing and then we can create a logistic yes. plan from that yes and they'll, they'll probably be um a base price for you know some just like a date and um lettering and then if you want extra lettering because it was a significant house or it was used for a specific purpose um that would be extra okay it have to be a different size sign as well, I would assume. Or bigger letters. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're right. Now, um, does anybody have a recommendation of a local sign maker? Because we should keep it locally if we can. Um, I've got the internet has a gazillion of black vendors, but if there's somebody local, I'd like to know. So... When we were looking for the big signs, um, I spoke to somebody out of Cummington, and I believe the Historical Society recently worked with them. So I can pull up that information. And then there was a third one that was also fairly local. Um, I don't know if this is something that would fall under Sunrays, um, but there's definitely some local companies that we can find. Okay. I can look into that. So I can find out who made the church's sign too, because that was fairly recent, last couple of years. Maybe it's something, I don't know if he has the scale, but Wedge might be able to design something quite nice. I'm just looking at, he mostly who does flags, it? but I don't know if you guys could see this. <laughs> it's quite nice. What is oh, you're talking about Justin Zakowski. Is that his name? I don't know. Everyone calls him Wedge. I don't know his name. I do. Sorry. <laughs> I went to high school with Justin. He does some nice stuff, but I don't know if you'd want to do something He's, like this. It, what's it? His affordable. company's like Aqua Vita or something. Is He's, that who you're thinking I of? I don't know if that's his or if that's another one. He does rustic flags by Wedge or something like that. Rustic flag. I'll look that rustic up. Wood maybe it's not Justin. Wedge. But there's also an Aqua Vita thing and there's like a Tammy Williams does something, but I don't know if it's signs. But there's there's a number of people in town who do sort of creative objects mm. that might be able to, you know, maybe we have a contest or something, <laughs> proposed designs, and be like, yeah, no, none of these are good. We'll go to a, a sign company. <laughs> but thanks. That's so, you know, we do have the um, 250th, uh, um, it, by, well, it's not bicentennial, it's 250. What is it? The anniversary <laughs> coming up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh -huh. if, if that seems like, oh, it's forever, it's two years away, but, you know, it's not really all that. Mm -hmm. yep, no, it's 1775. So it's, maybe make uh, this a, um, you know, revisit this as something and we can work with the Historical Society on uh, mm -hmm. promoting uh, since they did the, the other, last one. The other group that we might be able to work with, and I, cause, because I know they're planning things, is DAR. Yes, I knew yeah. you were going to say that, and that, that's great. So, <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah. So, the 250th is later on our agenda. So, sounds like we've got a plan for the plaques. So, we will do our research and then come back for that. Um, next up is commission membership. So, I had reached out to some of you about s submitting paperwork to Jennifer. Um, I only heard that Courtney had done that. The other people who I reached out to, did you also do that? Yes. Great. And she you. acknowledged it. Great. I haven't seen it, so I didn't. I don't think I sent it to you. You did it last year, Sherry. Okay, good. Did I do <laughs> it? Because if not, I need to do that. <laughs> I will double check. It was okay. either Brianna or Mary. I don't remember because it was like you had fulfilled an empty spot that was up this year. So you had to like re-up. Right. I saw that, but I, w I don't oh, remember. Yeah, I haven't to... seen that. Okay, well then it's me. <laughs> so I'll have to look into what I need to do. I can try to resend you the email. Okay, thanks. I think I should have it saved in a folder. So I'll see if okay. I have it. Um, we do have one open spot. I know eDragon applied. Don't know if anything has been done about that yet. Normally Jennifer um, lets me know. So I will check in with her about that. And also, 
somebody needs to be thinking about taking over as chairperson since this will be my last year on the commission since we are wrapping up some exciting projects and of course starting new ones, but I need to take a break for a little while. So, so I'll be thinking about that. And if you have any questions, I can help answer them. Um, also, like over the next year, I'm willing to work with you to show you the ropes, um, walk you through any of the stuff I do. Well, I can uh, put up my hand and say, I am not prepared to do that. <laughs> well, I was God, thinking I about you got me excited. <laughs> I'm still getting used to roll call. <laughs> well, that's part of the problem is that come March, I think they're going to kick us off Zoom. Wow. So. Yeah. That's a ways away. <laughs> so, Sherry, were you saying you're thinking about it? No, no. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, no. I would say I just that I would... I a project with DAR, so. I would say that I would think about it but I feel like I could never be as graceful as you Diana on the okay. zoom calls you are so well spoken and I feel like we should chain you down <laughs> to keep you from leaving because I, I think we're, I think we're going to be screwed without you personally oh, but don't say that well you well, handled the uh the issue tonight masterfully yes exactly right. thank you very yeah. eloquent Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So moving on, uh, next couple of things, no big updates. Haven't heard anything about the Lions Club Fountain. Um, and no one else has pressed us about that. So that's just on the back burner. Uh, Railroad Street, Courtney continues to check in on this. Um, there is potentially a development, but we don't know anything more at this time. All right, now we can talk about the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution. Yeah. So, Sherry, you were saying that we're actually looking at next year, not 2026. It started in April of 1775. Okay, so that's when they are considering us that, starting. The it's my, okay. yeah, that's my inclination anyway, yeah. Okay. But um, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean, I mean, de de independence wasn't declared till 1776. So that doesn't mean they don't, they're not going to extend it for that full mm -hmm. year. And I think that's a strong possibility that it will be extended for that full year, but Concord and Lexington were in 1775. Yep. So, you know, it's interesting because I grew up, you know, with Johnny Tremaine in Boston and Concord and Lexington. And I don't know, what was the revolution like out here? Oh, many people from out here went to help out in the eastern part of the state i shouldn't say many a number of people i'm because excited to learn about it in in, do, in doing my research to be in the dar um that is oftentimes they didn't stay here they went out and for like three months at a time there you know there was no inscription they just went for whenever they could and did whatever they could and then came home again to harvest their crops or whatever so um that's why you get so many people that can trace their roots back to the DA, I mean, to the revolution, because they did, so many people did contribute in a variety of ways. So. Um, I meant to look this up before this meeting, so I apologize, but I know they had a whole um, slew of activities back in 1976 in the town. So there's plenty of connections, I think, to do stuff. The Alan said they haven't... Um, set any programs for next year or the following year for the historical society but that they would consider doing a revolution focus to tie in um last weekend i was just traveling around and i went out to hingham massachusetts and they are planning a big uh webinar lecture series and so the woman there was going to reach out to me hasn't happened yet but she is interested in partnering with other historical societies historical commissions to just get the word out and to um sort of be co-hosts no cost on our end just to help with spreading the word really um mm -hmm. sherry what's okay. the dar planning i think they were the ones who had originally sent us an email well the problem is is that DAR is meeting right now <laughs> every oh, time no. we meet, they meet. So uh, I have a meeting um, that just got, it was supposed to be Thursday, but it's been postponed to next week because people have COVID now. Uh -huh. um, 
No, I, I'll try to get an update there um, from that meeting. Okay. Yeah. COVID's all over the place, by the way. <sighs> Tell me right. about it. Held out for oh, four years. Finally got everyone me. We know. Oh, no. <laughs> um, also, I think it would be a very cool thing to talk about, you know, especially with the preservation plan summary, hopefully coming this fall and winter. Um, it'd be very cool if we could start doing like a, the rolling plaques through 20 or yeah, 2025 to 2026 as kind of like our thing for the mm -hmm. um, 250th. It would be neat if we said like, here's our program that we're offering through this year. To yeah, you just, uh, you just, you uh... just, or <laughs> that April of 2025 just pushed that up, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Sorry, that's why I'm I'm hoping the summary I'm won't be done. It. All right, got it. Oh, Sometimes up. quick deadlines make action happen. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Um. About page reads, Dad. <laughs> but I think for our next meeting, we should invite the historical society to join us. And we can try to see what we can do together. Um, I mean, I know Denise just rolled off the commission, but she's in charge of the Memorial Day parade. So perhaps a connection there as well. Maybe an additional parade. People seem to really turn out for those. Um, I know we had a really big one back for the 350th for the town. Um, and what about the rest of the towns around Pioneer Valley, Deerfield, Sunderland, Hatfield? South Hadley, Northampton, Amherst. I mean, we can put out requests to see what they're planning, see what they're doing. No, um, at the Deerfield time always. of the revolution, I feel as though most of our daughter towns had broken off at that point, um, mm -hmm. but still good connections to make. Yeah, South Deerfield's always has a lot going on, it seems, in terms of those celebrations. Um, so they might be a good place to start. I think... I don't know about the, I mean, I'm sure Amherst will be doing something we Can check with them as well. Um, and then oh, I was going to say something else, but I lost it. There's a lot going on in the background. Here. <laughs> I'll, I'll think about what I was going to say. Deerfield, I, I would assume that Deerfield itself might be doing something around the revolution oh. as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't know, realize that Northampton was founded like what, nine years before Hadley? I thought Five. 1654, Five? I think. Okay. But still, yeah. You know. Okay. Yeah, they were first. Northampton was first. So there is a website called America250.org. Um, and they're saying that July 4th, 2026 is the date that they're commemorating. Um, I mean, I just Googled this and pulled it up. So don't know like all the background for it. But looks like they have a um like a steering committee. Um, one person's from Worcester County, so not too far away. Is it Massachusetts based or? Um, um it's national. Hmm. That Here, would make I'll sense. Then. Drop the link in the chat. Maybe this comes back to use of the common. Maybe there's something we can figure out to do <laughs> for use of the common. Yeah, yeah. It'd be yeah. really fun. Definitely, mm -hmm. like have that parade and then have it end on the common with something mm -hmm. big celebration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just something to explore here. Um, but perhaps our next meeting can have a bigger focus on this. And mm -hmm. I will look at the materials I have for what they did 50 years ago. Okay, I'll, any other comments? I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep my eye out on things and start to look for what's going on in different places. Awesome, thank you. All right, anything else we need to talk about that we didn't know about before the agenda was posted? All righty, so we decided on August 27th for the ribbon cutting. I will work on organizing that. Um, and then our next meeting date, so a Tuesday in September, we're looking at September 17th or 24th. Do we want to meet at all um, in August after the CPA application or prior to town meeting to discuss that? Or is there, I don't know what the follow-up is once we submit the proposal. So is it, so town meeting is not until the end of October. Oh, okay. But um, they, CPA does have meetings 
My computer hates the town website. It says it's unsafe. All right, one second. Let's see if they've listed when they will have their meetings. They're usually Monday nights. Yeah, even if it's just like wherever they're going to vote on those applications, I'd love to join the meeting. Yeah, if it was you'll be invited to do that. Right. Um, oh, it says already. Their next meetings are August 26th and September 16th. Um, and just, I, I guess I'm not sure about the procedure. So if they approve the application, does, does it then have to go through town meeting or are they allowed to just say it's approved? Yes. Yeah, so what's going to happen is the first meeting on August 26th, you come present the application, they'll ask you questions. And at that point, they'll ask you to like fix anything or add anything. Um, and then you go back in September and that's when they vote. And then based on their vote, it gets added to the town meeting warrant and then town meeting has to vote. The town meeting has to vote on a $1,500 application? Correct. Yes. Because it's, it's taxed money. It's Got in it. a special okay. account there's all yeah. kinds of rules okay so then i should be prepared to attend both of those meetings then is that correct oh. i can i'll be there too yep. oh right sure is our new yes yeah representative okay um and they're oh, they are on zoom okay yes both um, of those meetings i can also try to be there um i mean brianna if you think you need a meeting before that August 26th date, then we can look into that if you, if you um, want to do that. No, I don't necessarily think I need a meeting if, you know, if I sort of know like what the timeline is with that stuff. And I can always touch base with you, Diana, just yeah. kind of on the side, if I need some sort of guidance with that. Um, I'll have to double check the dates and make absolutely sure that I can be at those meetings. And if I can't, for whatever reason, because of childcare, um, we'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. But I should, I'm hopeful that I'll be able to go. Excuse me. Okay. So for our regular business meeting, um, September 17th or 24th. I think I can do either. The 17th is better for me because then I won't have a conflict. Okay. I think. Um, wait a minute. Maybe it, mm -hmm. oh, no, the 24th is better because okay. it's the third. It's the third Tuesday of every month. All right, let's do the 24th then. That works better for me too, because I'm away the week before the 17th. All right. And well, when, when is the town meeting? Do we have a date for that? Town meeting is like the last Thursday in October. So, oh no, it won't be because that's Halloween. There's too many Thursdays in October this year. So it should be October 24th. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so October 27th is a ribbon cutting. August 27th. Uh, August 20th, yeah. What did I say? October, but it's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. August 27th is a ribbon cutting. September 24th is our next meeting. And is it August 26th with the CPA meeting? Yes. Yes. Okay. And if anybody needs some moral support, if you want me there, I can go. Okay. The second one is September 17th as well, if you wanted to put that 16th, on your calendar. 16th, I think it said. September um, what? September 16th is the second one. These oh, are all okay. listed on the town website? Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, it, I'm sorry, it is the 16th. That's the Monday, yeah. Okay, just let me know if you, you know, oh, right now I think I'm around, so I great. will be there for moral support. And um, great, you can do it. All right. Well, thank you everyone so much. Uh, thank you for your continued work on all these projects. And I will send out this um, draft of the CPA application that Brianna put together. Um, Brianna, you'll probably have to give everyone um, access to it. That's unless fine. you want me to download it and put it in the general Google Drive. Um, if, if that's an easier way of doing it, Might that be. is totally fine. Then all everyone right. can have editing access. All right. I'll do that then. Okay. 
I and said to Diana, I was like, people are going to have to help with the formatting of these things because obviously I've never worked in an office. So I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I was like, please help. <laughs> Send <Okay>. help. <laughs> so please, please, my point is please feel free to edit whatever you guys see fit. I know all of you have more experience with these kind of things than I do. So I appreciate any input, any and all input at all. Right. They've been edited how many times now, Diana? I know that I've looked at them at least three times and made edits, but yeah. Yeah, all the things. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes. So move. Yes. And a second. Yes. All those in favor. Aye. Yes. Aye. All right. Aye.